I was overweight. I thought I was happy, but in reality, I wasn't. I couldn't wear the clothes I wanted. I couldn't take my shirt off in the summer at the beach and I felt uncomfortable in my own skin. I tried different diets, consistently played sports and I tried to go to the gym regularly, but nothing seemed to work. I still looked the same, but something changed not too long ago. Did I cut the fat or carbs out of my diet? Did I start fasting a couple of days of the week or did I exercise all the time? No. I actually increased my protein intake. What's up guys, my name is Zabir. Today, I'm going to tell you how a high protein diet changed my life. Let's get into it. Okay, I get it. You're busy, your life is hectic, you're trying to have a balanced social life and you try and go to the gym as much as you can, but in the back of your mind, you know that your diet is off and you can't seem to hit your protein target consistently every day. This was me. I legit tried everything, but my body wasn't changing. So how do I consistently hit 200 grams of protein every day? First, there's something you need to know. What even is protein? You're made of it. Your hair, your organs, your muscles, the enzymes in your body, everything relies on proteins. You probably know that there's three main macronutrients, protein, carbs, and fat. Proteins are made up of chains of amino acids bound together by peptide bonds. There are 20 amino acids that make up the proteins found in the human body and your body needs all of them to function correctly. And there's nine essential amino acids, meaning that you have to get these from your diet and your body produces the remaining 11. And unlike carbs or fats, your body can't actually store the protein. I won't go into the chemistry, but essentially the protein you eat gets broken down into individual amino acids during digestion. And then they're absorbed into the bloodstream and utilized throughout the body for making enzymes, hormones, immune system proteins, and of course the contractile proteins found in your muscle. Protein is in a constant turnover as well. Let me explain. Imagine a busy construction site where old buildings are constantly being knocked down while new ones are being built at the same time. In our bodies, proteins are like these buildings. Protein turnover is the continuous cycle of breaking down old or damaged proteins and building new ones using amino acids. This constant turnover is important because our bodies need proteins for growth, repair and maintenance of basically everything. So when you're lifting weights in the gym, you're breaking down proteins and during rest and eating, you'll be making proteins. And this leads on to muscle protein synthesis. This is the actual building process where your body takes these amino acids and uses them to create and repair muscle proteins, making your muscles stronger and bigger. There's a couple of specific essential amino acids like leucine, which play important roles in triggering muscle protein synthesis. Foods rich in leucine include beef, poultry, dairy products, uh, soybeans, and seeds. Isoleucine and valine are also important for protein synthesis. Now, in order to stimulate muscle protein synthesis, you need to eat enough protein at each meal. How much is enough? So approximately 0.4 grams per kilo of body weight. If you weigh 75 kilos, 0.4 multiplied by 75 gives you 30 grams of protein per meal. I'll get onto the different protein sources in my diet in a sec. You probably have this question in mind. How much protein do you actually need every day? Well, it depends on what you're trying to achieve. The World Health Organization recommends about 0.8 grams per kilo of body weight. So if you weigh 70 kilos, you just need 56 grams of protein a day. But you should know that these recommended daily allowance figures that are thrown around don't actually represent an ideal intake. It actually represents the minimum intake needed to prevent malnutrition. This obviously isn't enough to maintain and even build muscle. Also, body weight is not the only thing that matters. Your activity levels are really important as well. And just to add, if you're overweight, or have large amounts of body fat, using your weight as a guide for your protein intake might overestimate the amount of protein you should consume. If you're bulking, your primary goal is to increase muscle mass and you need a higher protein intake to support muscle growth and repair. So you should be aiming for around 1.6 to 2.4 grams per kilo of body weight. Also, if you're in a calorie surplus, your body is less likely to break down protein and use it as a fuel source. So you can probably get away with aiming for the lower end of that scale, so around 1.6 grams per kilo of body weight. If you're in a cutting phase, you'll typically be in a calorie deficit, meaning that you'll have less glycogen and fat available to break down and use for energy. So you'll be at an increased risk of using protein as an energy source, which is not ideal. Because of this, aiming for 2.3 to 3 grams per kilo of body weight is probably a better option. And this brings me on to my 200 grams of protein a day diet. What do I eat? So I've been doing time restricted eating for a little while and I've done a video on this so I'll link it somewhere for you. Basically I avoid eating in the mornings. Before the protein police come at me I do it for a couple of reasons. Firstly in a weight loss phase if you reduce the time window in which you eat you can reduce your total calorie intake. I also don't really feel that hungry in the mornings. I feel sharper and more focused when I don't eat first thing and it can also improve your insulin sensitivity and reduce overall inflammation. So my first meal is a high protein one chicken breast 
a bit of rice and some vegetables. So that's about 30 grams of protein. This is technically my breakfast. So it's not the most traditional type of meal people have for their first meal. I usually have it around midday to lunchtime. And I always have a protein yogurt for dessert as well. There's about 15 grams of protein in there too. Bit of fruit as well. So the first meal is around 45 grams of protein. Then a couple of hours later, I usually have two cans of tuna with some light mayonnaise. And my cupboard is actually stacked with tuna cans. So that's another 55 grams of protein. I hit the gym usually late afternoon or early evening. And after my workout, I have two scoops of clear whey isolate, which is another 40 grams of protein. Also, after a workout, the anabolic effect of protein is more pronounced due to the increased sensitivity in your muscles. So you should ideally consume a protein source within the first couple of hours after the gym. Okay, so for dinner, the protein is usually either chicken, lean mince, steak, or fish. Usually I have a lot more protein than the carbs and veggie gets paired up with. So that's another 45 grams of protein at least. And then I have a protein yogurt for dessert. So that's another 15 grams of protein there. And that adds up to 200 grams of protein. I'll put the totals on the screen now. This is generally what I eat on most days, but it's not a super rigid diet. For example, I sometimes swap the yogurts for a protein bar or for my first meal, I have some eggs, which is a really good source of protein, by the way. And I have them with a small uh, piece of toast to keep the carbs minimal. Sometimes I like adding egg whites as well to sort of boost the overall protein content. Also, this is not all I eat. I obviously eat fruit and veg to keep it balanced. I'm not on a protein only diet. I usually eat out with my friends at least once every couple of weeks. And if we do, I try to pick things high in protein like steak and chicken. Actually, not too long ago, I went to Nando's, shock, and I got half a chicken with broccoli and coleslaw. And a half chicken has about 80 grams of protein, which is nuts. Some people say that you should avoid consuming over 30 grams of protein per meal because your body can't absorb much more than that. So the question is, can you absorb all of it? The answer is yes. Absorption refers to the uptake of nutrients in your digestive tract, most of which happens in the small intestine. And your digestive system wouldn't be much use if you just ate a meal and then hours later you just get diarrhea and all the nutrients would be wasted. Just because it's not utilizing the protein immediately after you eat doesn't mean that it won't get used. Your body will digest and use all the protein in your diet. I'll link a couple of studies below, uh, one that demonstrates that having more protein, so 40 grams after resistance training, stimulates more protein synthesis than having 20 grams. Whilst the amount of protein per meal can be a useful guide, the overall amount you consume in a day is probably more important. So what if you're veggie or vegan? Both plant and animal proteins can be part of a healthy diet, but if you're plant-based, your protein requirements might be higher. This is because they contain less essential amino acids and are less bioavailable than animal proteins. So to compensate, you can either increase your soy or pea protein intake, or you could try a leucine supplement. So protein is critical. Having a diet packed in protein is important for so many reasons. It was one of the key lever moving actions for generating a good physique. And if you want to build muscle or maintain a toned body, then a protein rich diet can help lay the groundwork for these goals. It helps you to maintain and build muscle if you're resistant training. It helps you stay satiated more than fats and carbs. And it's really helped me in managing my cravings and controlling my overall calories. And having a high protein diet massively helps when you're cutting as well. In a calorie deficit, you're obviously consuming fewer calories than your body requires. And protein helps in preserving muscle mass and can prevent the breakdown of muscle tissue for energy, ensuring that weight loss comes from fat stores rather than precious muscle. I guess what I'm trying to say is that you should really prioritize protein, but you probably won't get anywhere if you don't actually put the work in the gym because muscle hypertrophy is triggered by engaging in physical exercise. And that brings me to the end of the video. If you found this video interesting, then you might want to watch this video on intermittent fasting. See you guys in the next one. Peace.